And welcome back to coverage here of the Neon Dynasty Championship. Marshall Sackliff with Cedric Phillips. We've got Carlos Ramal and Andrea Mangucci all ready to go down in the feature. You can see a quick look here it reveals Golgari Food versus Is It Phoenix. Kind of a classic historic matchup here, at least uh, as it's gone before. This is game number two as we come in. And uh, as you can see, Andrea Mangucci is up a game. He's looking comfy in that scarf. Looking comfy. He always looks comfy, doesn't he? I know. He's one of my favorite Magic players in the world. I challenge you to find someone who loves playing Magic more than Andrea. Yeah, no. It, Good luck. I, I, challenge not accepted. <laughs> I mean, we had a camera, you know, on him before, like while he was getting ready for the match, and he's like sorting out his cube cards or something. I, he's yeah. He's just he's a machine. Yeah, it's really incredible. Like doing complicated plays and relaxing. Yeah. <sighs> kind of cool. We can actually hear the players here. I'm sure you can as well. The matchup that we see here, Marshall, is one we saw a lot at the Innistrad Championship, where food was dominant in the hands of that the, the Japanese team, uh, and mm -hmm. they ultimately, you know, destroyed the top eight of that tournament. And Yuki Ishikawa won with Gagari Food. So a pretty traditional matchup, as you mentioned, is Carlos is off to a nice start here with a squirrel, a goose, and an oven. There's consider on end step here for Mangucci, possibly signaling to Carlos that lands could be an issue or that he's got a lot of extra cantrips right now. One thing we do know about this food deck is it's very much an engine deck. So there's no Trail of Crumbs just yet. The Meat Hook Massacre can, can be considered an engine card. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, you've got the Witch's Oven, but no Cauldron Familiar. So it, it's kind of a combo deck, kind of not, but it's trying to put a couple different things together. But once the House of Cards is up, it generally does not fall down. That's right. And like you said, it, it's a, that's a good way to view it, right? It's it, There's any number of, call it two, sometimes three card combos that come together to generate different types of advantage. But once a couple of them are there, it's really difficult to knock it off because they usually give it give itself redundancy so that even if you knock off one piece, they found it again anyway. Oof. Unless of course you end up with all the ovens. Yeah, you know, you get a little oven flooded and now, you know, the pieces aren't coming together accordingly, which is a little bit frustrating, I suppose. He's gonna give us a little little song and dance here. <laughs> I really just want to know what he's having for dinner later, because I'm here for those tweets every time. Well, I'm sure his dad's making some beautiful seafood pasta. <laughs> yeah. Manguchi cuisine, as he calls it on his Twitter feed. <laughs> It's like Ravenous Squirrel's going to get hungry here. Yeah, apparently. Okay. But uh, that ended up with two counters, thanks to a couple of things being sacrificed. So three damage. And we have seen this before, that Ravenous Squirrel can get completely Ooh. out of hand. Uh, I guess also when you have multiple ovens in the way that uh, that Carlos does, you you can afford to toss one away. I do wonder what Manguchi makes of it. Right, because it looks a little, a little aggressive, right, from Carlos to just be like, "Screw it, sack my food, sack my oven, just get in for three. Yeah, I just right? really like, needed this damage. Right, like, like Manguchi must be ooh, going, "Wow, ooh, you, ooh. you must not have anything else going on." Well, Mangu finding a copy of a Holy Heat here is pretty, pretty timely. Didn't have an answer to a squirrel that was, you know, more than two toughness. So the fact that he found a Holy Heat and has Delirium means that 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 turn, last turn from Carlos, looks a lot worse now. Correction, by the way, from uh, from the beginning of the match, this is actually game number one. So we get, oh, okay. to, we get to see the whole thing. Lovely. Even better. So oh, Luris yeah, goes yeah. into hand, land, and the oh. ultra aggressive oh. attack with the goose <laughs> sent in a message. Carlos really feeling himself right now with that attack. <laughs> he got a smile out of Manguji. Yeah.
You know, sometimes know. they say the goose is loose, Cedric, and man, when it's, <laughs> when it's shipping for zero, like. As a thing that people say. <laughs> a lot of people say that. I'm really curious where Mingu's going to go this turn, because he's got a lot of options. Finale is definitely one of them, triggering Dragon Drake Chandler, of course. You know, is there is there a clean way for me to Phoenix is into the graveyard? It looks like the answer is yes. So what does he get here? He gets Faithless Looting and Consider out of the deal. That's a yeah, that's... lot of cards. He's seen a ton of cards here. That's what it looks like. And the Faithless Looting last. Oh, there's another Phoenix as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, the it's kind of an all-in-one package there. It, it counts as three spells in and of itself. So those two Phoenixes are ready to come back straight away. Bang, bang, bang. Down to nine goes Carlos Ramau. Another Gilded Goose off the top. Doesn't seem to be what he needs. Does this Meat Hook Massacre get the job done? It should clean things up pretty well. I mean, a decently. I don't want to say pretty well. It's going to clean things up decently, right? Because it's going to clear away everything on the battlefield. Great stuff like that. But we know that this uh, that this is a Phoenix deck doesn't have that much difficulty getting those Phoenixes back from the graveyard. Just drew another copy, too. Okay, well, let's just reset things temporarily. Is that another Phoenix going in the yard there? Yeah, so there's a third one in the yard right now, and the ability to either play Iteration or Flashback Faithless Looting is on the table. So this was this was very easy. Again, this is the appeal of Is It Phoenix, right, Marshall? Yes, because yes. your deck is consistent. It does the same thing every game. There's no one that can really stop you from like, hey, I'm going to get these Phoenixes back and everything. It's just more of a, is the thing that I'm doing better than what I know your deck can do? <clears throat> At the Innistrad Set Championship, the answer was yes. Golgari Food, Yuki Ishikawa. Look, what, what those Japanese players were doing was incredible. They were able to get the engine online. Carlos is trying to do the same thing. He just hasn't been able to. You can see his little chit chat at the end there. So that's game number one going to Andrea. Menguchi as he's going to pick up that first game. And we're actually just going to take a minute here, uh, Cedric. We're going to uh, skip game number two. It ended okay. up going a little too long for us to get the whole entire match uh, on. But uh, we do get to see the deciding game number three, which means that Carlos won game two on the post board. So let's get into game number three here between these two. Now this hand from Carlos, this I like a lot more. Now again, he's still missing some pieces to the puzzle, right? He doesn't have an oven to go with the cat, but he's got the most important card in my opinion in the matchup, which is Trail of Crumbs, because Mangucci has no good way to get it off the battlefield in most instances, so. I'm wondering if this is actually game three. Oh yeah, given that Carlos is on the play? Yeah. Yeah. But we'll find out. At any rate, we'll just kind of hang with this game for a bit here and see what happens. You see the trail of crumbs hitting the battlefield here on two. That was what he missed before. And because, because trail is the card that really kind of ties the room together. It just does everything for your deck. Mm -hmm. He had uh, three Witches' Ovens in the first game. Mm -hmm. You'd like one right now. Just one's yeah. fine. Don't need more than that. But uh, right now he doesn't have it. He's got another Ravenous Squirrel. He does have some ways to get through his library a bit here with Deadly Dispute, if he'd like. Got to be tempting. Yeah, I'm curious if he does want to play the Squirrel this turn. We got to remember, right, Car Carlos is a you know, former world champion. I mean, he's... He's all world at this game. What? But, and I mentioned that because to say this, excuse me, this deck's really hard to play. Like, really hard to play. Yes. It's called our food deck, but extremely it, hard to play. But if you play it at its maximum level, again, like we saw at the Industrial Championship, it's probably the best deck mm -hmm. in historic High, highest ceiling. Yeah, for sure, for sure. You can see Manguchi trying to set himself up with Faithless Looting. Ooh. And another one. Okay. Looks like he has just the one Phoenix in the yard there. 
Kind of, I think he was hoping for a second one here. And I wonder, uh, I was kind of, I'm curious what four drops he wants to keep in his hand. He's got two Crackling Drakes and a Chandra. Uh, I, I wonder how heavily Mangucci favors Chandra in this matchup and in this in this position of the game. Mm -hmm. You can see he's also got an eye on that Unholy Heat. That's a way he can not die to Ravenous Squirrel. It does get absolutely huge. Mm-hmm. Here's your oven. Okay. Now he's getting going. Oh, this is a fun screen. <laughs> <laughs> That's just a different match. <laughs> uh, but, okay. But, you know, we did get a good idea there for how game number two went, Cedric. As you can see, that good start from Carlos Ramau uh, to kick things off. Yeah, this is a little confusing now because it's just a different match on the screen. But what we're going to do here is we are going to let game two come to its conclusion on its own. And uh, again, spoiler alert, Carlos won game number two. And that means that we do get to show you that third game that we intended. Uh, you can see how game number two went. Maybe we can use that in our third game to kind of understand what needs to happen from Carlos's side to make it work. Because as we saw, Maguchi did did have some things going on too. It wasn't like he was missing land drops or wasn't playing any spells. Oh yeah, that was that, there was plenty going on on both sides. We're gonna, we're gonna jump into game three right now. But more importantly, you know, we were seeing Carlos get the full setup going, right? Found an oven, has a trail, so that stuff's just gonna happen. Has a meat hook massacre to kind of clean up anything that's going on, and then that enchantment is in the battlefield. So, uh, I'm not too surprised, let's say, uh, that uh, that Carlos won that game. Now, game three, we don't know who won, so let's find out. Let's do that. So here we are, underway in game number three. And you can see, we're seeing this from Mangucci's perspective at the moment. So we'll just follow along with Mengu. And uh, it's, it's always kind of interesting when this happens because we don't get to see what, what's in the card, in the hand, excuse me, for Carlos. So Andrea, you know, he he knows what we know. Yep. And here's one thing I know for sure. That spell pierce is huge because keeping Trail of Crumbs off the battlefield is a big deal. Now Mengu's hand is not that great. You know, we're not seeing any iterations, considers, ops, faithless soothings, nothing like that. He's gotten the bad end of things as far as that is concerned. But the Look at this. Phyrexian Tower sacrifices the food, or excuse me, the plant token, and the Meat Hook Massacre is enough to wipe the board now. And a full reset there. Yeah, that, that plant token gave Chandra a little taste before being used for good for, uh, for Carlos via the Phyrexian Tower. And now the Meat Hook Massacre cleaned everything up. Carlos sitting at a pretty comfortable 14 right now. Expressive iteration goes on the stack here. Post Sprite Dragon, decisions to be made now for Mangucci. Trying to pick up this third game. These players, by the way, it's worth noting, are at two and two for their record. So they're in that kind of precarious position where, you know, they don't have the luxury of giving away losses uh, too often from here on out. So every match is going to be very important for these two after a rocky start. You see a cat has now shown up. Looks like it's going to get sacrificed to a Phyrexian Tower. That'll trigger the Meat Hook Massacre. Might be going trailing now, perhaps. Yeah, so this is, this is you know, Mengu, I'm sure, was thrilled when he got to spell first the first trail, but mm -hmm. the second trail is just, it, it, it's a total bummer for him because there's no way for him to get it off the battlefield realistically. Uh, and so this engine's just going to be online, and this engine's a lot to overcome for Izzet Phoenix. Yeah, this is this is why you play the deck. Here's Fatal Push now. Remember that cat got sacked earlier, so that's going to be a full-charged Fatal push. Here's Gilded Goose and then Lurus. The Dream Dance going to go into hand as well. What a turn there for Ramau. Yeah, used all the mana, did all the things, mm -hmm. killed some stuff and now, really, to me, it feels like the only piece of the puzzle that's missing right now is an oven. Yeah. And, you know, the Gilded Goose uh, will do a, a fine impression here with the Trail of Crumbs so that he can dig and find what he needs to find. Yep. This is a tough spot now 
for Andrea Mangucci. He does start things off, though, probably the best way he can with Expressive Iteration. And he did find Unholy Heat as well, so he can kill the Gilded Goose if he sees that as a, a potential a form of card advantage that he can't suffer. A lot of different cards in Mangu's hand, but it's all kind of removal based, and this deck really does kind of more often not just shrug off removal pretty well. So, Let's see if that Anger of the Gods Exile Clause can play a role in things here. Yeah, curious. I, you know, and Carlos is 14, potentially going to 11 here. And he's actually going to chump perhaps a nod to the Luris in hand that he's already got. I don't know if he had anything else to bring back, but he can do that. Okay. Carlos prioritizing his life total quite highly there. But if it's relatively free, you know, it's not such a huge thing. Okay, this is Phyrexian Tower acting as a sacrifice outlet. Now we're going to see a food get chomped. That's going to trigger the trail of crumbs, a man of floating anyway. And there's Hello. the witch's oven as well. Yep. Ooh, the pieces of the puzzle are coming together beautifully here for Carlos Ramau. He has a man of floating as well, so this Luris will have a slight discount on it. And now he can get that Gilded Goose back into play again. That's going to generate him a food token. Mm -hmm. He can just pay a mana for a witch's oven and another one for a soul guide lantern. And you can't like Andrea Mangucci's position here. <laughs> he is uh, no. under an avalanche of cards at this point. So let's see. If you're Mangucci, you're going to lose a card from your graveyard. Whatever. This Anger of the Gods is fine. It's fine. Mm -hmm. Start with an opt, though. Mangucci's going to need to find things like Crackling Drake to kind of... Uh, provide a follow-up threat if he does decide that uh, he needs to anger this turn. He could do some some cute stuff, kill his own Arclight Phoenix with Unholy Heat that counts as <laughs> one of the spells, and then they yep. come back at combat after he's already, but it looks like he's going to put the uh, Arclight Phoenix that he saw on top in back on bottom. Here's Pithy Needle. That's actually pretty nice. You can this name, also which forces is the issue on the lantern, right? Like, yep. In so, in some respects, in some respects. Does he just need to name witches oven anyway? Or? I that's what I'm kind of thinking. Mm -hmm. I think he might just need to name witches oven. Wouldn't be surprised at that either. This is a tough spot. I mean, Carlos just has a lot going on here. Pithy Needle still on the stack, although the Witch's Oven did get activated in response. And he's going to name Cauldron Familiar, so I guess he wants to keep that thing in the bin. And here's Unholy Heat to take down Luris. Life total down to 11 for Mangucci. That Meat Hook Massacre has been kind of chipping away as well. And then Mangucci gets to attack with Arclight Phoenix. So a little awkward here. He put a Phoenix on the bottom. He still has an Anger of the Gods, but now he doesn't want to fire it off. No, he, do he really, really doesn't. Also, Gilded Goose uh, is a fine activator for Trail of Crumbs anyway. The Outland Liberator, also an answer for Pithy Needle, and it's going to get nabbed immediately. That Pithy Needle stayed on the battlefield for just half a turn there. Now Cauldron Familiar is set to go again, and uh, once the Trail of Crumbs gets going, it usually doesn't stop. Yeah, the engine is back online, folks. Oven. Really tough for blue red, right? It's just they yes. don't have the ability to to take care of these permanents. Well, that may have been Mancucci's best draw there. He needed a big time cantrip to find multiple cards in one turn, and so mm -hmm. Expressive Iteration kind of checks the ultimate box right now. Yikes! Land in the hand. He's gonna fire off Consider though. That's what he ended up getting off of it. Not great. Okay, he did replace the Pithy Needle. That could be interesting. As yeah, the we Liberator's did, we did, gone. We did see this last time. You know, that last needle made it half a turn. Let's see how long this one's going to hang out for. Mm-hmm. Mangucci falls down to eight life, and it looks like Carlos is going to up that a little bit here as well, as he can go Cauldron Familiar, bring it back, trigger the trail, 
ding you again with the meat hook massacre and the familiar trigger and he even he's going to stop there there's cauldron familiar being named once again life totals getting very sketchy here for Menguchi. he's down to seven yeah and with food tokens being involved carlos's life total is not really that scary right you can sacrifice a food token go up to 14 you can make another food token with a gilded goose and sack it and go up to 17 so nothing too scary as far as carlos's life total is concerned Mangucci has to keep attacking because you, you don't, then you know, you're you're not getting anywhere. So if I'm Carlos, I feel like I'm sitting pretty even though another needle showed up. Totally. Mangucci even was looking at Anger of the Gods. He does have a den of the bugbear, maybe thinking, okay, I'll swipe the board here and then try to clean up the mess with uh with the den, but he decides against it. Really precarious position here. There's Faithless Looting, but not a ton of cards in hand here for Mangucci. He has been able to find action, though, so let's see what he can hit here. Particularly if he's decided against casting Anger, then, you know, he could upgrade that to a Crackling Drake. Yeah, I think we're going to see that upgrade complete here in just a moment. Okay. He's finding threats. He's also down to six. Yes. He's going to die to that Ravenous Squirrel plus the triggers from Meat Hook Massacre if he's not careful. So he's got to keep that in mind as well. This is a very tough spot. But uh, I know I'd rather be sitting in Carlos's seat at this point. I'd be feeling good about things if I were Carlos just because you, you more or less have your engine almost entirely online right now. Falling down to eight again is not that big of a deal when you have a food token on the battlefield and the ability to make more. Just another 14 power Drake here for Mangucci. It's still an impressive card. He'll get a card back out of it as well. He's he's hellbent, as we say. He has no more cards in hand. And another Ravenous Squirrel. These threats are adding up very quickly. Yeah, Let's see what he can find. Let's see events. Well, I mean, that's card discard to Faithless Looting, so might as well spend that wheel again. Oh, hello. Oh. <laughs> well, oh. there's two Arclight Phoenix. And He's decided here... to split the difference there, said. He put one oh. in the yard and one in hand thanks to that... Uh, the Soul Guide Lantern? The lantern. Yeah. yeah. Yep. You don't often see them, <laughs> you know, go one in the yard, one in my hand, but do here yeah that's what that's what he's got to do right now so let's see if i'm just curious if it's possible for carlos or excuse me for mangu to get out of the turn because if he can he might be able to do some stealing of things here i'm just not convinced that he can yeah i'm not sure either uh there's a good chance he just dies you know now yeah but it vanished heavily in favor of carlos right now that's right. I mean, e even in his worst case scenario, he gets the squirrel big enough to be lethal and forces yep. the Drake to trade for it, which is really kind of Mangucci's best option. But I'm sure he can just kill him here. Th this is where, <clears throat> you know, the Meat Hook Massacre addition to this deck really helps out. It's just done so much damage over the course of the game. He's got him down to four with it. Let's see, sacrifice that. Oh, One, two, can three, he meet four. hook for four here? Yeah, that's what I think he might be setting up. That'll kill or the rest, and then he can attack with a squirrel for the last one. Yep, that's what I'm thinking right now. Mm hmm. That would do it, and Mangucci's tapped out. May as well get rid of the, the goose if you're going to meet hook for four anyway. Yeah, you got the Phyrexian Tower to do that, so yep. now you get to hook it up. And that's game. This is what it looks like on Gagari Food gets its engine online. Yeah, exactly. It's it's such an avalanche. And uh, there's just a squirrel left over. That's going to be good game from Andrea Mangucci. And Carlos Ramau wins a tough three-game match against Mangucci. Finally finishing things off there with a uh, with a little, little chippy attack from a little baby squirrel. Never did anything to nobody. And, uh, 